what's up YouTube back again uh, today I got a another project car video for you um, I've got a lot of videos made I just haven't really had time to edit and upload stuff and uh, with summer closing in I should have time to be posting quite a bit more regularly so stay tuned for sure but uh, today I got a instructional video on how to install a timing belt on a 4G63. Uh, it's the uh, turbo motor inside the Eclipse that I'm building. Um, mine is a six bolt block with a seven bolt head and uh, it's got a ton of mods done to it. But the in install of the belt is going to be the same for either a six bolt or a seven bolt. So stay tuned. I hope it'll help some of you and uh, hope you enjoy. Okay. So everyone wanted a car update, so I've been working a long time on getting a lot of stuff nice and new looking again, but uh, I actually got the head, I got my block in my garage finally, I, I got all the rest of the pieces I need, um, I got everything all done, you can see I actually have copper o-rings that are laser cut into the deck, I have molly forge pistons, and then a bunch of other stuff in here. Got eagle rods, Boy. but everything's freshly machined, good to go. I had the pistons polymer coated. It's like a newer thing, but supposedly you have a little tighter clearances with the polymer coatings on them. So we'll see how that works out. And then uh, I'll, I'll post a couple pictures. Uh, the valves on here are beautiful, but I'm not really gonna hold it to a point where you see them, but. Other than that, the uh, head was fully built also. Got a total port and polish, uh, valve job, all sorts of shit. Um, let me see. Hold on, I'm gonna give you an underhead view. Back. Dun, dun, dun. You can't see those beautiful valves, but under here. Beautiful, oversized stainless steel valves. And then, uh, of course, I got BC 272 cams. I have BC springs, BC retainers, and then I have the re revised 2G lifters. I got the HKS cam gears. Cool little HKS uh, oil cap. I got the 10A end lines. I actually sanded all the logos off. And then, uh, did a lot of other little paint. I painted the uh, fuel rail, a little CAS cover, a couple pieces down here just to make everything kind of color coordinated. But uh, I'm gonna have to charge my phone, it's getting weak. I already uh, hand tightened my ARP head studs down. So I'm gonna put the head onto the block. Uh, I'm gonna see if I have my tripod close by. But uh, if not, I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Look at some of the other stuff going in here. Actually sanded and repainted the uh, oil pan to match. Got my top mount manifold over here. I actually cleaned the living shit and repainted the pulley on my alternator. It's actually getting hidden where the AC compressor used to be. Um, I gotta clean this one up. These are the uh, little engine hoist brackets there. One, this one goes on the intake. This one goes on the exhaust manifold. I'm gonna clean those up. I'm taking them off once I get the engine in the car, but I still don't want to put them on all rusty, so that's gonna take a little more work. And over here, I got some other random shit. I got my intercooler, upper intercooler piping here. I might sand it down and repaint it. Um, it's not in bad condition. It's got like a wrinkle coating to it that's a little beat up. Maybe I'll redo it or paint it a different color. I don't really know yet. Then we go over here. I actually cleaned up the uh, transfer case, painted, sanded and painted all the brackets to like coordinate the colors and whatnot on the transmission. Then up here we got the cross member, same thing. Got the water pump pulley, same deal. Then I got the uh, water pipe back here. And then I cleaned up my starter, made that look nice and new again. Some of the parts I didn't replace because this has uh, just been way too long of a freaking project. I've done so much crap to it. It started with just replacing a clutch and then I decided I was gonna do a full motor build. I had a six bolt bottom end. It's actually a 2G 
car that came with a seven bolt, came with the nice split thrust, but I still like the six bolt motor more. I actually have a seven bolt head out of my previous Eclipse. We had an apartment fire. I ended up getting rid of that car, mid engine build. And uh, long story short, my pistons are a little dirty. They were in a house fire. I, I had them, everything hot tanked, brought the block back, had everything remachined after the house fire. And then uh, ended up keeping the head out of the other one. I did all the block work and I wasn't sure what I was gonna run for a head. I had a two or a six bolt head that I was gonna run with the engine. And then for nostalgic value, I decided to do the seven bolt head on the, the six bolt block. And uh, other than that, everything's fully built. I had everything done by Bill at Apex, which is, he's like a legend in the DSM builds. So <clears throat> everything was done by him. Everything's up to spec, ready to go. So uh, i charge my phone a little bit more and then we'll drop the head on and torque that down and uh, we start moving on from there. And for questions, I'm actually running an OEM composite head gasket. So, let me go on this way. It's a little hard because you got the two dowel pins, so you kind of got to play around with it a little bit to get them to both seat correctly. There you have it. Sadly, I'm going to have to let you charge for a little bit because my battery is low. But you see, fully seated. Here we go all the way around so next step is going to be to torque the head studs down the battery's dying i don't know why the charger's not charging it here but so uh I'll take the valve cover off get the head studs i got the arp nuts on for the top of the studs here somewhere and uh we'll get those next and uh once we get the head torqued down we'll flip it over put the oil strainer on and then put the oil pan on and then uh, probably seal all the ports off for right now. And I gotta run to the hardware store. I know I need a six by 1.0 by 10 millimeters for right here. And right over here to hold my starter plate on. Um, again, I, I like had a bare block, so I bought a brand new OEM starter plate, but uh, does not actually come with the studs, so or the uh, bolts, so I'll look around. I might have them here, but if not, I'll run to the hardware store. They're not any special grade or anything, just regular bolts, so anything will do. And I made a little bit of progress here. I uh, connected the alternator relocation kit. If you're familiar with the 4G63, the alternator normally sits right here, which if you were looking under the hood, it would be right here in the front of the motor. It's kind of ugly. Uh, the power steering sits on top of it, and then it's the alternator. I actually deleted the power steering, so there's nothing here. I figured why not get rid of the alternator here also. Uh, this is like a little spacer bracket it actually comes with in case uh, you are using the power steering still. It spaces it correctly. I'm installing it in the block just so I don't lose it, but uh, I'm not using power steering. But uh, as you see, 
this uh, Jay's Racing Kit, as it's called. Do, do, do. It's actually a uh, custom-made bracket. Dun, dun, dun. And it actually relocates your alternator back here, which is where the AC, which I also deleted, goes. So I got all that done. Here's a nice look inside this beautiful head. Look at those cams that have never been spun before. BC 272 cams, like I said. We got brand new BC uh, springs and retainers. I got the regular rollers, lifters. Uh, there, there's really little roller rockers. No upgrades for my car, sadly. So just OEM ones. And then uh, other than that, there's our ARP studs coming out. And, uh, I didn't get a upgraded uh, oil pressure regulator. I might down the road. I'm not really 100% sure. They make a nice kick leaves one. Debating on getting it. But uh, other than that, everything's all nice. I'm going to uh, molly lube the, uh, what is it, the washers and then the nuts. And I'm going to get these guys on and then I'll torque them all down. But uh, other than that, the engine's almost assembled. I got uh, everything in time here. Down here, I'm actually about an eighth of a turn off. And it was just because I know I'm going to have to torque these. I'm going to get a wrench here and torque them. And I didn't know if they'd rock at all. I didn't want them to touch the valves. This is an interference motor. So didn't want to kiss the valves even just torquing that down. So other than that. I'm gonna get all that shit on and then uh, be ready to do all that, torque the head. And then I got a couple other little BS things to get and then I'll throw the timing belt on. Once I get the timing belt on, that'll probably be the next video. We'll uh, pull her over here. I got my trusty old engine hoist back there. So we'll hook that up. I got the brackets. First one goes here, second bracket goes here. And then I'll be able to hook it up to the hoist and uh, we'll get it under the hood. But uh, as you see, I haven't really done a whole ton of updates on the car itself. But um, in the recent months, I did the, the brakes and rotors, obviously. I added the BC coilovers in it. Um, repainted this guy. And then uh, all suspension, lower control arms, brand new. Upper control arms, brand new. I still got to do the rear because we got the front jacked up, so I haven't been uh, messing with it too much. And then under the hood, we took care of that hideous strut tower that was right there. Other than that, we painted everything, sanded everything down, got all the rust off, did it to the uh, cross member too, and then the front cross members up there, nice and purple. I painted this little guy purple. I painted a lot of stuff. The uh, HKS purple just to color coordinate it and then uh over here we got our other little bucket of goodies these are the adjustment wrenches for the coilovers these are those two brackets I'm cleaning up and then I got my fuel injectors which I actually have a full extra set those are FICs and then in here I got a little little plate for the flywheel and then my flywheel bolts. We got the tensioner bolts. Uh, we got my wastegate over here. And then, uh, here's the oil strainer. I gotta put that on after we get the head torque down. And then I got a new OEM gasket. Brand new OEM bolts for it. So we'll install that guy. And then uh, other than that, I, I pretty much replaced any bolt that I could. I went uh, Extreme PSI and STM are amazing for OEM bolts. Like I actually get them all in the Mitsubishi packages and everything, but I got the crank bolts. I had everything assembled. That's why they're in my little special label bags and not the Mitsubishi ones. But I've uh, slowly accumulated like every single bolt that I needed. And now I got a few more little gaskets and whatnot I got but you see like every bolt that I get I actually are like the dealer OEM ones I know in here I got the two nuts for the upper uh, 
is it the, the driver's side engine mount and uh, I think that's the trans mount bolts and I got new breathers for the transfer case and the transmission to put in I got a uh, competition clutch forged clutch fork that's going to be going in it I got an OEM throw out bearing and uh, just a bunch of other crap to install it'll be a few videos doing the build but I'm hoping uh everything going to plan i should have this bad boy in the car within the next day or so and then only like real special stuff you need during this job pick this up this actually holds the uh timing gears in time so you don't jump time when you're uh, putting the, the belt on and everything. And then this, this little tensioner pulley thing, a little special one for here, but on the Mitsubishis, the tensioner, yikes, there goes. Of course that stupid thing gets stuck to my shoe. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. But uh, this guy, hooks on there, right there, and then that's what you use to actually put tension on that pulley. So we'll get to that shortly, and uh, I don't know, I'll be back soon. This is actually getting long, so I think I'm gonna actually make this the end of the update video, but uh, I'll definitely uh, post a few more videos in the near weeks here. Probably, maybe I'll make another video at the end of the week actually installing the motor, and then, uh, I actually am using a 1G block so they didn't have crank sensors back on there. So I actually have this upgraded kit. So my car, which has a crank sensor, can still get a sensor reading from it. But uh, other than that, we'll cut it here. I know you guys wanted to see a little update on the car. Um, hopefully I get this in this weekend. I'll probably do a WASP video in the middle of the week and then I'll, I'll do a final update on here. And uh, once the motor is in the car, I still have a lot to do. I gotta do the whole fuel system still. I gotta get tuning software. I gotta turn the whole car around so I can do the coilovers in the rear. There's a little bit of strut or rust repair I gotta do in the rear. Finished everything in the front. Everything's, any bit of rust that was in the whole front end, middle, up, has been ground out completely, coated, resurfaced, painted and everything, so. We're good on rust on the front. I know in the back, I have two little tiny patches I have to make, and then uh, we'll be all good to boogie. So I'll be with you guys again soon. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you wanna see more of the uh, project car videos, let me know in the comments. I've done a few videos on my car, but they never get any views. So if some of you actually enjoy it, let me know and I'll keep doing them. But uh, other than that, stay tuned for more WASP videos. All right, uh, <clears throat> pro tip 101. <laughs> when uh, installing ARP head studs, I'm not sure 100% if it's a six bolt block, seven bolt head issue, or if it's just all 4G63s. It's the first time I've actually fully built an engine for a 4G63. So I noticed like this spring was good, this spring, I could not get the ARP washer down in. I couldn't get it down in that one, that one, or the one right here. And it was the washers were hitting the springs. So what I ended up having to do was back out the stud, put the washer down, and then put the stud back in. So if you're running in the issue that the washers don't fit, just take your stud out and put the washer in first. Uh, other people said you could take the head off and put the washers in and then put the head on there. I'm by myself, so I don't have a person to line anything up. So for me, I just took out each stud that I was having an issue with and installed the washer first, and that solved my problem. Alrighty, so a little update. My phone charger in the garage does not work. So uh, I ended up, I torqued these guys, 65 foot pounds for the cam gear bolts there. And then uh, I did torque the head down here while I lift off the valve cover. Dun, dun, dun. 
And uh, you can go on DSM tuners for all the uh, torque specs. I'm using ARP bolts with the Molly lube that they give you with the actual studs. Um, I did, uh, from what I read, it was three stages. I did the torque sequence to 30, then 60, and then I ended at 90 foot pounds. So uh, other than that, I gotta put the valve cover gasket on, and then that'll be all ready to go, but everything in here is done. I'm gonna probably run to the store, get a thing of assembly lube just to put on the cam lopes, cause uh, again, these have never been ran before. So make sure everything's lubed up and nice before we put the valve cover on. Today, I have to do the timing belt. So uh, got a beautiful HKS timing belt here that I'm gonna be putting on. And uh, other than that, uh, I actually, broke my tripod so I'm gonna try to MacGyver it up while I do the uh, timing belt and uh, we'll get to it. All right. <clears throat> All right so prior to installing the belt you want to have your cam dowels up it's kind of a resting position so it's pretty easy to get those lined up and then I got the little tool to lock the gears here and then uh, down here there's a little diamond on uh, the balance shaft pulley here I'm actually not running balance shafts. Uh, eh, I can't see it right now, but uh, not running balance shafts. So I still line it up anyways. I'm doing the Kigley's crank trigger sensor kit. So on here, I put a little white outline to make it more visible, but there's a little dot. And we're uh, just looking to line it up right there. So everything's lined up nicely there and up there. So then uh, I'm gonna put you down Let's see if I can get you like kind of up here. And you, as you can see, I kind of had to slightly budge the cam a little to get it all nice and tight there. So we got that all done. And we go on this side. And we're going to go around this guy.
like everything is good where it is. Yeah, I'm gonna pause you for a second while I find my little tool. But uh, you're gonna have a tool to tension this right here. And uh, other than that, Tom, this isn't really a great timing belt tutorial. I could have done a good video on that, but uh, so we got our dowel pins in the up position, we've got the marker there is actually just a hair off, but that's fine. And then over here, our timing mark is dead on there. Everything else is in time. We just got to tension it and everything should be good. So I'll be right back. I got a little tool that goes in the two holes here. So I gotta find that. Finished project, got our belt on, two dolls are up. Timing marks I had to, you couldn't see, but I marked them with that, but this guy locks it, so those should be perfect in spot. And then uh, our timing mark there lines up, and our timing mark there lines up. So now I'm just gonna cut the zip ties off, and then take this guy out, and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna take all the clips and everything off now. There we go. So, timing marks oh, yeah, are looking good right in the middle there. So, what they say to do is rotate the engine six full turns. Make sure everything lines up. We're gonna actually see our grenade pin right here. Sorry, I didn't even mention that before, but to know when it's properly tensioned, from everything I looked at, you just want it to be a smiley face, pretty much. Oy. You just want the two dots to be upward, just like the dowel pins on the cams. But when you know that you got it in there correctly, this dowel pin, 
will move in and out freely. You see how easy that goes in and out? So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pin out, just set it right here, and we are going to rotate the engine six full times, and we're gonna see if our marks line up again. So bear with me. Um, this is a pretty high compression motor, so even with the spark plugs out, it is a little fearful to turn, so. My dowel pins are still pointed up. Come down here, crank mark lined up, oil part pump mark lined up. So now we're gonna see if the little grenade pin here, oop, I guess I pull you down here. And these guys are like a, a millimeter off, but that's just cause, oh. It rests just a hair off. If I crank, rotate it around, I can get it to uh, actually go in the same place. But now, let's see. We have dropped it. And now, I freaking dropped the shit. can get it in, but it's not going in as smoothly as I would like. So I don't think it is properly tensioned. I think I'm gonna have to try it one more time. All right, so I had to end up tensioning it just a tad bit more, but I rotated another six times. As you see, it comes in and out super smoothly. So I just didn't have it properly tensioned. You can kind of see here, just for shits and giggles, we'll uh, rotate it again, just to make sure. All right, I'm not gonna do the full six because it's not necessary to show, but. So now, boom, it goes right back in and out. So now, we know the tension belt, or the timing belt is correctly tensioned. So, uh, <clears throat> My next step here is uh, I'm gonna do the valve cover gasket. I'm actually gonna run to the store, get some assembly lube there, and then uh, I'll do assembly lube on the cam gears, and then we will put the valve cover on, and then I gotta flip the motor upside down, and uh, I gotta do the uh, oil strainer, and then we'll do the oil pan, and then once we get the oil pan on, I'll throw the timing cover on. After I do the timing cover, it's uh, time to mount the uh, flywheel, the clutch, and all of that components. So uh, I'm gonna cut it at here. I know I said earlier I was gonna cut it where I was at, but I figured I'd get the belt on and all tensioned, everything ready to go actual motor-wise to make it a complete video here. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. The lighting's kind of crappy right now because it's getting a little dark in the garage so uh i'm gonna cut it here and then i'll be back tomorrow and uh hopefully we'll get that transmission connected to the engine tomorrow and then she's gonna go back in the car um i actually got a new project car too um it's not gonna 
be touched until the eclipse is done. But uh, so I'll, I'll actually show a little clip of that at the end of this video here. But so uh, once I get the eclipse done, that's going to be the uh, next little project car we have going. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, if you guys like the car videos, let me know. I'll definitely post a few car videos over the winter here in my off season. I do have some videos. They're just not the greatest of videos. Obviously, I posted the more popular seeming ones during the season. So I got lots of ground wasps and some other removals to post too, though. So stay tuned. There's going to be a ton of videos coming. And then uh, again, comment below. Let me know if you like the uh, automotive videos and I can keep throwing up a few of these. Dun, dun, dun. So I've rotated it probably a good 20 plus times. Um, once again, could use some assembly lube just to make sure these brand new cams were lubed. But uh, other than that, we come over to this side. Everything seems solid on the belts. Our timing mount here. here let me put on the uh, flash for this. So timing marks here. We're lining up, timing mark here, lines up, timing mark there. This is like a tiny, tiny smidge off, but uh, it's actually for the balance shafts, which I don't have. So I wasn't really focused a whole lot when I was lining that up to begin with. But uh, other than that, everything is properly timed. Everything is tensioned correctly. So uh, we are ready to uh, proceed. I gotta put the timing cover on here and then uh, after I get the timing cover on, I'm going to do the uh, valve cover gasket, then we're going to flip it over, like I said earlier, and uh, I'll get to that. But uh, I'm going to cut the video for now, and uh, I'll be back, I guess, after I do a few more little things, and uh, we're almost ready to get this engine in the car. I didn't even think about showing it, but uh, <laughs> one last thing. So uh, after we lined everything up there, again, everything's lined up. You just want to make sure the holes in your little grenade pin there all line up. Should be able to just put it right in, pull it out. So I've rotated the engine over 20 times. It's actually, I've done it in sets of six full rotations because in order for this one to line up, it's got to go around six full times. But we got all the marks lined up, so it's good to go. And uh, we'll move on from there. <laughs> 